Today we're making an oaked mango mead that's pretty freaking good. Let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get the awkward part out of the way. The mango I'm using in this is not actual cut up fruit mango. It is this Vintners or Vintners, I don't know how you say it, wine base. So I'll show you a picture of it. It's used all the time in winemaking and things and um, it's very accessible to lots of people. I didn't want to go through the hassle of using quote real mangoes, meaning that cut them up, do all the things. So I cheated and use this and I can already sense the people who are clicking off this video or typing frantically getting angry at me for using this so I don't really care if you don't want to do that that's fine get over it um, we're gonna show you how to make or I'm gonna show you how to make this this is a pretty easy brew I will show you the recipe right now on the screen and tell you it um, it is four or five gallons of me mead I use six pounds of blueberry honey um, 103 ounces of mango wine base, six pounds, oh sorry, I already said the honey, uh, water up to five gallons, five grams of Lauvin 71B, and then in the, oh, I also used for made O for my yeast nutrient. Um, after the primary, I added two ounces of Hungarian um, oak cubes, and then I stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite and added one pound of mango blossom honey to back sweeten and bottled it. So let's go ahead and open this sucker up and we'll talk exactly how I did it. Of course, I recorded the whole process. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so it's pretty dang clear. I mean, I think the clarity on this thing turned out great. Oh. I'll talk about how I achieved this clarity in a second, but I had to do some things to get it really, really nice looking. Um, let's get some nose on it. Oh, I mean, that is like putting your nose straight into a mango. Very, very warm. It's like got some, some bright tropicalness, but it's a very warming tropical side. Definitely sweetness on the nose. Um, the oak kind of comes in there and, and hits me in the back over here. Oh, it's so fragrant. I love this thing. Um, let's talk about how it tastes. Although it's so juicy. The body of it's very, um, just very juicy. I mean, it's a little bit, it doesn't have a lot of tannin, I should say. The tannin washes over fast, but I kind of like that personally. The sweetness is, is very prevalent. Um, there's a little bit of acid balance that I had to do, and I'll also talk about that. Oh, yeah. This thing is fantastic. The oak really kind of rounds out the brew, and the mango flavor, like I said, is more warming and warm, fr fruity, not so much like bright, citrusy, tropical-y, but it is still mango in there. Um, I think the sweetness level is really nice for this as well. This thing is something I'm going to be sending off to competitions, by the way. Um, I have a bunch of bottles of it. I am 1000% sending this to competitions because I think it's pretty freaking good. So let's go backwards in time and talk about the creation of this thing. So step one, I sanitized everything I had it, that I used using star sand. Of course, you need to do that. I then took and mixed in my honey, my water, my mango base, and um, basically mixed all that up. I then went ahead and added my yeast in. All right, one quick little editing fix. I actually made a yeast starter where I took part of the must, put it into this bottle, added the yeast in there, let that set for about 24 hours to let them start acclimating, create their army, and then I went ahead and poured them straight into the brew, and then it was activated. Um, I followed a Tazna 2.0 schedule for my nutrient additions, meaning I added nutrients over four periods and then I added them in smaller doses, essentially. essentially. So just to help provide this uh, brew with what it needed. Um, so that went through the primary after I'd mixed it all up and did all that. It fermented, oh, well, it started at, I should say, it started at 1.095 final gravity was 1.000, so it fermented out completely. 
we then took and put it into a new container and we let, let it go ahead and kind of clear some, just kind of yeast settle down. Um, I decided it was probably time to go ahead and do some oaking for this thing. It had been probably a couple weeks since then. So I oaked it for with two ounces of oak Hungarian oak cubes for roughly about a month and a half. Those sat in there. I didn't add a lot of them. I should go ahead and say that. So I probably could have added way more oak cubes to this, but I just didn't. Did that. Um, came out of that state. I thought it was pretty good. I decided it also needed some um, help with clarity again. So I added some powdered wine tannin, which is a little pro tip for you. Powdered wine tannin is a great way to add a little more tannic value to your brew, but also help with clarity. That dropped a lot of the clarity problems out and it just cleared right up. I mean, you can see it now. It is super clear and that is largely in thanks to or largely thanks to the um, powdered wine tannin. I also noted it needed a little bit of help with acid adjustment. I don't know if I did this on camera, but I took some tartaric acid because I wanted kind of a more, um, not a bright acid for this thing, and mixed some in. I think I probably used um, a quarter teaspoon or some tiny amount just to add a little more acid value to it and then uh, stabilized it. When I stabilized it, I used potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are a stabilizer uh, in conjunction will halt yeast fermentation from occurring. That safely allowed me to back sweeten. So then I went back and I back sweetened with one pound of mango blossom honey, which I chose that because I wanted more mango flavor and the mango honey doesn't really have mango flavor so much as it has tropical-esque notes. It's not exactly mango. Um, back sweetened with that pound of honey. Again, let it set for a while longer to hopefully clear up. And it, and it did, <laughs> it cleared up. And I went ahead and bottled it. Uh, the adjuncts or adjustments that I did are what really made the difference with this. Had I not added the tartar acid, had I not added the oak, had I not added the back sweetening, I think this would be a completely different brew. But it, even the, the um, powdered wine tannin, I think this thing would be way, way different. So those extra steps, while they require me to do a little more, actually really helped this brew. Yeah, this thing, oh man, it's so good, it's so juicy. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this. So I think this is extremely doable for everybody watching. Um, I get, again, I did not use real mango. See the air quotes? because. Most people are going to get mad that I used a wine base. Uh, I don't have a great access. I don't have great access to mangoes around me um, that are like good. Like I just I could go and buy some crappy mangoes, but I wanted to make something that would work well and that wine base works well. You could do this with real mangoes and substitute out the wine, the wine base and get, I don't know, maybe like four pounds, five pounds of mangoes per gallon. I think mangoes are a delicate flavor that I don't, I've never brewed with them, like the real the real fruit, so I don't really know exactly if you need to use more or less. I'm sure someone in the comments will come and correct me. You could get all those ingredients. I'll put the recipe up here again. This is a mango mead. There's a lot of uh, variations on the mango mead. Um, I think you know a bunch of people have done it. This is just my version. One day, maybe I'll come around and start to use uh, real mangoes and see what happens. But for the time being, I'm a big fan of this one. I think you should go and make it. I think you should make a mead in general and support your local meaderies, your homebrew stores, your everything essentially mead related to help this hobby grow. You can also support me by getting on and uh, hitting like and subscribe. I have a Patreon. I have a YouTube, uh, I don't even know what they call it now, community thing now where essentially you can, uh, support the channel for as little as two bucks a month. There's ways to support with that, but feel free to do that. Go make this mead. Go make a mead. Let me know what you think down below. I appreciate your time. I hope you've had a great day or have a great day and I'll see you next time. Cheers.